Welcome back to my video series where I teach you how to fly an FPV freestyle racing acro drone, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to teach you how to fly it. This video is one in a series. So if it feels like you've dropped in in the middle of a conversation, that's why there is a link in the video description below to the full playlist for the whole series. And if you're looking to learn from the beginning, that's where you should start. But if you're here for the topic of today's video, then Let's get into it. In recent videos, we were working on a little bit more acrobatic flying flips and rolls and so forth. But in this video, we're going to go the other direction. We're going to slow it down a little bit and address a topic that many of you guys have been asking about in the comments, landing. How do I land? For today's lesson, we're going to be on the green yeah, just to give a little variety and because it's a nice wide open track. And for many FPV pilots, landing basically just means crashing with style, to borrow a phrase from Buzz Lightyear. It's a little hard to demonstrate in the simulator because the simulator is actually a little bit forgiving when it comes to touching down on the ground, but you'll just kind of fly in towards the ground and then disarm a couple inches off the ground and dunk, 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 the quad tumbles and falls over. And frankly, that's, that's not actually like, we're not flying a camera drone here. We're not flying a DJI drone that like, oh, if I crash it, is it gonna break? What's gonna happen to the gimbal? Freestyle and racing drones are really durable. And so frankly, that's actually a fine way to land, but it doesn't really demonstrate great control and precision. It doesn't make you look like a really good pilot. And if you wanna move on to more advanced things like perching, where you like will land on top of an object and disarm and just sort of sit there, you're gonna need to know how to touch down gently. So that's what we're gonna get into in this video. So uh, what I want you to do is take off and we're just gonna fly and let's just try to find a relatively wide open area, okay? And I'm gonna turn to face this relatively wide open area. And what I wanna do is pick a spot where I'm gonna try to land. Because obviously if we just had an infinite plane we could just touch down somewhere on that infinite plane and be like, oh, I guess I landed. But landing is really about picking a spot and ending up there. You touch the ground, you kill all your momentum, you stop moving and you're there at that location. So let's see. Let's say I'm gonna land on this road around about the top of that hill, right? There's two trees off in the distance, and then there's a little bit of a hilltop just on the other side of the sprinkler. So we're gonna establish our flight path here straight towards the landing location, and then lower the throttle just a little bit so the quad begins to descend, okay? And fly through. We're not gonna worry about touching down yet. We're just gonna establish that descent and fly through or over the landing location fairly close to the ground. So go back as far as you need to go back to be able to get a good run, a good straight run at your landing location. Like I'm way far back. I can see the sprinkler. I can see the intersection I'm shooting for. And I'm just about above the treetop level. I'm gonna establish forward flight. And then I'm gonna fly straight towards it. And I'm gonna lower the throttle until I see the quad begin to descend, okay? And I'm gonna find a throttle position that puts me close to the ground about when I'm at about the location that I wanna land. And this is gonna be the trick here because as a beginner, your altitude control is one of the things that you're probably having to work on the most. So to then find, if you're having trouble just sort of holding altitude, to then find a good uh, throttle position where you're descending in a controlled manner may be just as tricky. But in the same way that if I'm trying to hover, I'm going to carefully and slowly adjust the throttle until I zero out my vertical altitude, my vertical movement, right? Well, we're kind of doing the same thing, except instead of trying to zero out our vertical movement, we're trying to find just the right amount of downwards movement. But it's the exact same sort of thought process as when you're trying to hover. So, here we go. I've got my run towards the landing location. I'm gonna lower throttle, and I'm gonna try to find a throttle position that has me descending straight towards the landing location. 
and I'm not actually gonna land. I mean, you can touch down if you want to, it doesn't really matter. How could you like mess this up? Well, one way to mess it up is if you descend too fast and like, can you see that I am obviously descending too fast and gonna land before the desired location, right? So if I'm descending too fast, I need to raise the throttle just a little bit. And just like when you were trying to learn how to hover or maintain altitude, you're gonna to wanna to make very small changes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower, oh no, this is too fast. Okay, I'm gonna raise the throttle. I don't need to climb. I can just hold altitude here. And as I come in, I'm gonna lower the throttle again. I'm just gonna try and skim over that landing location. If I'm coming in too high, I'm gonna need to lower the throttle a little bit more and come in a little steeper. That's actually worse. It's worse to come in too high because dropping straight down on the landing location is much harder because you can't really see where you're going. Whereas coming in low is basically just like making a low approach. So here I'm super high and I haven't started lowering the throttle. And now I'm gonna try and lower the throttle and come, come in super fast, but it's, I'm gonna be like falling out of the sky super hard and it's gonna be pretty hard to manage. So it's better to come in a little bit low than a little bit high most of the time. Work on that for a little bit and you should be able to judge when to start the descent. I'm gonna start my descent about now and I'm thinking about the angle I will make. See, I'm now I'm making a very steep angle towards the landing location. I don't like that. So think about the angle you're gonna make and you wanna shoot for maybe a 30 or 45 degree descent slope, I would say. So you're gonna to wanna to judge when you're about 30 or 45 degree descent slope to the landing location. Okay. And that's for me, I would say is right about now. De lower that throttle and come in, make small adjustments up and down with the throttle so you boom. Well, I didn't mean to boom. I said the word boom and then I boomed. So you hit that or skim over that location just as you pass, pass past it. Then once you've worked on that for a little while and you've gotten half decent on that, the next thing we have to do is actually like land. And in order to do that, we have to kill our speed, okay? So landing with the quadcopter moving quickly, you'll touch, you'll hit the ground and then you'll tumble. And that's not very graceful. So what we need to do is instead of lowering that throttle, and you see that as I lower the throttle, I'm still pitched forward and I'm still carrying speed. So I'm gonna just pass through the location. I wanna start flattening out the quad. I wanna start using back on the pitch stick to flatten out the quad and kill my speed as I'm landing. And this is sort of the tricky part is managing your throttle to manage your altitude and managing your pitch to manage your speed at the same time. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is, uh, you should really have a good sense, like this is where I begin my descent, right? You're gonna begin your descent and as you do that, you're gonna pitch back so that your speed starts dropping as well. There's a little bit of a problem because if you pitch back so you're completely flat and level, it's very difficult to see underneath you as you're landing. How will you tell if you've hit the landing location, right? So what you need to do is as you come down, you pitch back a little bit and level out. But because you've come down, you can still kind of see the ground in front of you. So I always want to see my landing point. So here's my landing point. It's that intersection just past the sprinkler and I am never going to let it pass out of my view. I don't wanna land like this. I always wanna see my landing point as I'm moving into it. So I can see, well, just so I can see where I'm going and see that I'm gonna hit the landing point. So here we go. This is about where I'm gonna begin my descent. I'm gonna lower throttle. And as I come down, I'm gonna pitch back, keeping the landing point in view and pitching back to slow down and slow down, and then as I slow down, now I can't see the landing point. Now I'm like, I'm like completely flat, right? But I can see these trees in front of me and I have a pretty good idea that I'm over that intersection. And so when I hit this point and my speed is zero, then I'm gonna drop throttle a little and touch down. And as soon as the quad touches the ground, I'm gonna fully drop the throttle. What you'll see a lot of people do is they'll, from, from like a foot or two in the ground, they'll just drop throttle and plop it down. And that can work too, but obviously like the, the more skilled thing is to just precisely touch down and then drop the throttle. And of course, in real life, you would flip the arm switch and disarm, although I guess technically you don't have to. 
we're going to line up on the point. We see our landing point in the distance. Okay? We see our landing point in the distance. We set up a straight approach to our landing point. We reach the distance at which we begin descending and lower the throttle to begin descending. While managing that descent, we begin pitching back to manage our speed. I'm going to keep moving forward. I don't want to stop yet. Now I'm over my landing point. I'm going to level out and kill my speed and touchdown. That's what you're shooting for. That's going to take a lot of practice for most people. That's okay. That's what you're here for. It's doing those two fairly complicated things at once, managing your forward speed and managing your altitude at the same time. That's what makes this so challenging. And then at the very end, you really just start, you're just kind of using the force to feel where you are and see where you are relative to the trees. You can't actually see your landing location. So I'm a little high and a little fast here. I'm gonna need to kill some of that speed by, I'm actually literally pitching back to kill some of that speed. I'm not just leveling out. And now, there we go, I got it. And touchdown. As you continue to get better and better at this, and by the way, I hope you've just been working this for a little while. You obviously watch the videos how you want, but you, you know, get a little comfortable with this. You can start making those approaches shorter and that will add to the challenge. So instead of flying all the way back out here and getting them lined up, right? You can start descending later. Okay, so now I can just wait till a later moment to descend and drop in. I'm gonna have to be a lot more precise and there we go, boom. And again, I might need to actually pitch back to kill my momentum. Okay, so here I'm moving forward and if I just level out, air resistance will slow me down and I will coast to a stop hopefully before I hit this tree. Uh, but if you're going super fast and you need to arrest your speed, you have to actually pitch back a little bit. In fact, that should probably be the next lesson. That's a good skill that we haven't really worked. But just work on bringing it in and touching it down. Oh, there we skid it on the ground. That's not ideal. Okay. That's today's lesson. I'll see you in the next one.